We often get calls from rude people that are trying to threaten or ridicule us, seem to enjoy grossing us out with the gory details of the hunting stories, or tell us that we'll kill the animal if we don't come right now and pick it up. Fact is that most of us home-based rehabilitators can't just rush out and drive around to pick up animals. Who will take care of the critters we already have? The focus has to be on the animals already here. We are happy to take in critters, but we are so grateful when people can bring them to us. We simply don't have the resources to do everything they expect us to do, but the majority of people that call want to help and don't mind transporting the critter. Most wildlife rehabilitators these days are home-based. We can't charge for anything we do because these are state-owned animals, so we survive strictly on donations. If you are in this for the money, you will be disappointed. It is a lifestyle, a passion and a commitment. And most rehabilitators front the bills out of their own pockets and don't get paid anything. Some things just can't be weighed in money. But knowing at the end of the day that you are doing the right thing is more rewarding than a fancy car to most of us. Wildlife rehabilitation used to be more of a hobby than a profession back in the day. But times and laws have progressed. The government requires us to be trained in order to obtain the necessary permits, provide proper facilities which are subject to inspection in most states, provide release sites, even pay for our own pre-exposure rabies shots. Fortunately, more national and international organizations are working on research and studies benefiting our local wildlife and offer rehabilitators extended training courses. Some rehabilitators establish a wildlife center in the area, usually a non-profit based organization, because the government does not financially support wildlife rehabilitation yet. That's why there are not many independent wildlife facilities in America. Most are connected to colleges or vet clinics, so paid jobs in this field are still hard to find. There are permits you have to obtain from your state for mammal rehabilitation. If you want to rehabilitate birds, you will need a federal permit from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife in addition to the state permit. That's for nearly all types of birds, from songbirds to birds of prey. Different agencies are responsible for issuing wildlife rehabilitation permits and requirements also vary from state to state. In some states, the Department of Natural Resources is in charge of wildlife rehab permits. In other states, it's the Parks and Wildlife Department or Fish and Wildlife Commission. You will find direct links to each state's application on our website at www.wildlife-education.com. In almost all states, it is illegal to take an animal out of the wild and attempt to treat it on your own, no matter what your motives are. Even if you plan to release it later back into the wild, it is most likely not going to happen if you don't know what you are doing. As a wildlife rehabber, you have to be a very strong and determined person. There is a lot of frustration involved when dealing with the public and administrative side of this vocation. It's about hard work, long hours, no weekends or holidays, and never enough money. And a lot of emotional and heartbreaking cases where you have done everything you can, but still can't save an animal. All we can do is to provide a warm, safe place for an animal to die. 
However, being able to work with wild animals that most people don't even get to see up close, to touch them safely, heal them and see them be free again, that is a privilege to most rehabbers. Knowing they made a difference and got this animal back to where it belongs is worth all the efforts, expense and even the heartaches. In addition to the required permits, you will need a lot of items ranging from inside cages and incubators to outside enclosures and habitats. You'll be using medical supplies, syringes, nipples, wound care supplies, bottles, feet, blankets, towels, educational material, different formulas for different species, bedding, building supplies, volunteers, fundraising skills, time for education, and not to forget your own family and social life. In other words, a lot. It really helps if you are good with basic business skills so you can be professional in what you do with the public, organize fundraising events and such. Some folks find the idea of wildlife rehabilitation ridiculous or claim it's messing with nature. These folks neglect to see that most wildlife related calls that require our human intervention are the direct result of unnatural conditions such as careless behavior of people, toxins, poisons, automobiles, guns, traps, lawnmowers to name just a few. Often we are confronted with animals that have suffered traumatic wounds and horrific injuries. Some animals come in poisoned, shot, injured by cars and left for dead by humans. The stories and cases are endless and heartbreaking. That is called messing with nature and careless humans do it every day, whether we mean to do harm or not. We as wildlife rehabilitators are dedicated warriors on the front lines between suburban development and natural habitat and are grateful for every bit of support we can get. Thank you.